Okay, hello again. Um, this time we're going to be again dealing with enzymes, but we will be looking at the effect of temperature on enzymatic activity. And so in this case, we will be using catechol oxidase as our enzyme of choice. And what we will be doing is we will be incubating this catechol oxidase with its substrate um, after treating it at different temperatures. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a set of test tubes, four identical test tubes with water and catechol, that would be the substrate, and then set up another four identical test tubes with water and potato extract. We will incubate them separately. So I'm gonna have test tube A, test tube B. We're going to incubate it separately in a water bath or in ice or at room temperature. And one of them will contain the enzyme, the other one will contain the substrate, okay? The reason we're doing it this way is that we want to make sure that these two components are at the temperature that we want before we combine them, before we pour one test tube into the other. Okay? If we had put the substrate and enzyme together and then put them at the appropriate temperature, then that reaction would start the moment we transfer the two components together, and by the time the temperature reached the right temperature, there would have already been some reaction happening. And so to ensure that the reaction happens exactly at the temperature that we specify, we first incubate the components individually in that temperature, and then once they have come to the right temperature, we're going to then combine them together and look at the final results, okay? So I'm going to set up four identical test tubes with water and catechol, and then four identical test tubes with water and potato extract. So again, I'm going to add some water to my <clears throat> my sample tubes. So here's my water. And so in this case here, I'm going to be adding two and a half milliliters of the, sorry, I'm going to be adding two and a half milliliters of water to each tube, right? So I could do it by pipetting up, taking up two and a half milliliters in each case and transferring it individually or I could just fill the whole pipette up to 10 milliliters. This is why there's a zero starting at the top here, so that you can do two and a half and two and a half and two and a half, okay? So I'm going to do it this way, okay? So starting at zero, I'm going to allow this to drain up until two and a half. I'm gonna stop here, and then go on to the next test tube. Another two and a half milliliters that will bring me down to five. Another two and a half milliliters. Get me down to 7.5. So 7.5. There we go. And so the last one is going to be 2.5 again. Okay, so this avoids me having to do a lot of back and forth and back and forth. So this is again why pipettes have these numbers starting at zero at the top, and this is why it can be very confusing, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other test tubes. We always start with water because again, water is, clean water is pure, so we're not worrying about cross-contaminating your samples, so I can use this exact same pipette for all of my samples. So again, I'm gonna take up 10 milliliters of water. One test at a time with two and a half mils. There we go. That's one, two. Okay. Down to the five. <clears throat> Another two and a half milliliters to seven point five. There you go. And last two and a half milliliters. So now we have four tubes with water and another four tubes with water. And now I'm going to use another pipette to add 0.5 mils per tube, okay? And so here, I don't think we have two more pipettes, so I'm gonna have to use the one more pipette again. And so, catechol, I'm using this one. So again, I could do half into one tube, Half again, half again, and half again. Or I could just take out one milliliter and do half and half. So that's what I'm going to do. 
Take that one more. And they'll take two testings at a time. Okay, so here's one. These are my substrate materials. So I'm just going to label them all as S for substrate. And they're going to be going into different temperatures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the temperature on them. So I know your table says tube one A, one B, you know, two A, two B, and so on. But it's a little bit more useful to actually have some sort of a coating that is a bit more. Um, specific about what's in each tube. So we're gonna have a tube at zero degrees Celsius, at 20 degrees Celsius, because this room is probably not 22 exactly. And we're gonna have one at 37 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna have one at 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're gonna have three different temperatures. All these tubes are exactly the same. They're just gonna go into different temperature settings, okay? Now I'm going to set up the other set of tubes with my enzyme. Okay, so four tubes, each of them will get half a milliliter of potato juice. <clears throat> and we're going to take up a milliliter. To avoid having to bend your arm and twist your arm in weird ways, it's always a good idea to set your pipette in your pipette aid so that it actually faces you properly so you can see the numbers more easily. <clears throat> sets of tubes now and again I'm going to label these with B for enzyme and then the temperature that they're going to be at okay so again E for enzyme and then it's going to be zero degrees Celsius it's going to be 20 degrees Celsius 37 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Oops, not percent degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have these. I'm going to distribute these to the water baths and let them incubate for about five to ten minutes. And then after that, we're going to combine them and look at the results. Okay, so we're back with our results from the temperature experiment. And so we can see here as our four test tubes. This one was incubated at 4 degrees Celsius. We've already combined the enzyme and substrate tubes together, so you're actually seeing the results of the experiment, the, the results of the reaction. So this tube here, it's a little con a bit of condensation because it's still very cold. This was incubated on ice, and so you can see here there's a little bit of a reaction there, but not a lot. This is the 20 degrees Celsius tube, okay, and so here you have a bit of color developing here. Then we have 37 degrees Celsius. And we have 80 degrees Celsius. Notice the 80 degrees Celsius tube does not seem to have much color development there. Okay, so I let you guys think about why that might be. Okay, 
Now, what you want to do now is basically take a look at these and say, okay, which one has the most color development, which means it has the most product. The tube with the most product is the one that has the fastest reaction rate. The tube with the second most product, or the second most color development, is the one that has the second half fastest reaction rate, and so on. Okay, so decide for yourself what you think is the temperature that was the best for this enzyme, and then think about why that might be. Okay?